Okay, so if you want to give us a voice, feel free. What do you want to achieve by the end of this class? What actually do you want to achieve? Can we hear from you? If you want to put it in the chat room, feel free. If you want to raise a hand, please feel free. Okay, uh, Honorable Jason, good to see you in class. Please, you can kindly unmute Alicia from you, sir. Uh, good morning, Dr. Banito, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Babakwaike from Save the Children International Meduguri Office. My goal, my objective for joining this course is to develop my uh, project management skill set and to be a better project manager by the end of the program. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Mr. Jason. Okay. Uh, please, um, Mr. Ade, me kindly omit a laser from you. Ade, me kill a brother. <laughs> we'll have two Ade in me now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Maruf, maybe you should mute yourself. The noise is coming from your device. So, um, thank you. Yeah, I realize I realize that there is a gap with regards to project management, especially in my company. Mm -hmm. Love that. I have also, for a very long time, right from my service uh, years, I've been I mean, itching to actually be a professional project manager. manager. And I've seen that it's uh, a long time coming. It is, has, been, has been postponed enough. And it is high time that I take the, uh, the bull by the horn. And seeing the importance of project management, even where I work, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fighting for any promotion. I just want to be better at it. I love project management and I love it to come in a very professional manner. And I want to see myself after this program, actually spearheading projects, doing the right things in projects because it actually yields good results. I've seen the bad result of not actually uh, organizing project management, I mean, project very well, not managing projects very well. I've seen it firsthand, and I think things have to change. I will try my best. I will not force my knowledge on anyone, but I think I wish to be better at this. Even when I leave the company, I want to be something, a value, something of value to another company that values project management. All right. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so Honorable Maruf, please kindly unmute Leisha from you. Um, your, your microphone tends to be uh, making a noise, sir. Sir, no. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, um, I'm Yakub Maru. Um, from Africa Projects Development Center, Abuja. Um, basically, in my role of work, in my passion, um, I work in the environment of um, project management. And um, with that, uh, with this certification, I believe that there are some things that I may have been doing that um, they are not the best practices. And, um, and I believe with this um, course, I would be able to deliver projects more effectively. And um, basically for me, it's, it's, it's to certify my experience. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Maruf. Okay, so let's hear from, uh, let's hear from uh, architect Adeyemi. Please architect, you can unmute, let's hear from you, sir. Okay, so, um, Dr. Banito, let me first uh, uh, apologize for my late coming. No, 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 power no, no. Out we understand. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, our location is quite a bit uh, problematic. That's just. Now, the reason I'm taking this course, just as the other respondents have said, is number one, to, Im to improve and validate some of my experiences, maybe like you said in the ab initio concerning project management. And secondly, to be honest, I want to actually have a fully professional project management office. So certification two is very necessary. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, uh, the hand we are seeing, we have Baba Tunde Ude, Ude Kunle, hope I pronounce it, pronounce it right. Please kindly unmute and let's hear from you, sir. Yeah, um, good morning, distinguished facilitator. 
Ah, model kule baba tunde Jamal Zim by name, a fresh graduate from the Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta. Okay. So I felt the need to learn the art of project management because I see it as the rudiment for the uh, new world we, we crave in our country. So that's the reason I'm actually looking up to a platform like this okay. to, um, to begin the career. Okay. So thanks so much, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so we have different... Okay, we still have another hand up, Immaculata. I trust this should be for Nanya. Okay, kindly omit Lisa from you. Hello. Yes, if Nanya, welcome. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here. I have heard about project management a long time. And um, I want to have an experience of what it is like, and I want to further in my career. So that's basically why I want to achieve this. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so now that we have uh, all our intentions made known, um, one thing I will actually let us know is that the more we enter, the more we continue in this class, the more our objectives get to become much more specific and then we'll get to, some will be broadened, then some will be uh, reduced. Um, I sincerely believe that for every expectation that we are coming up with, uh, this by the end of this program, we should be able to have them. I sincerely believe that. So what is required of us, like I said earlier, it requires that we get committed at it. Uh, give it your best shot. Please, the person whose hand was up, please put it up. I will still come back to you. The person whose hand was up, please kindly put it up. I will come back to you. Okay. Uh, so give it your best shot. Yes, Bay Genshini Arigo. Thank you. Okay, so give it your best shot. No, don't take it uh, with any like a desical approach. We will only allow two classics for those who are not going for certification because of the whole thing around this particular program. We only allow for two classes. By the third class, we only focus on those who are really going for uh, certification so that all of us will put in commensurate time and effort, all right? The only thing you're required to do is pay your study material, get your commitment ahead, then you will know that you are part of the ministry full-time ministry, not associate ministry, okay? <laughs> okay, so give it your best shot. It will, it will, it will be demanding. I, I will not try to sugarcoat it. It will be demanding. You will study while you're working. You will study while you're sleeping. You'll be sleeping and be studying in your dream. Some of us will share our experience by the time we are done. I think uh, um, Mr. Mr. Jason, he has taken several courses here. Maybe he will, he will share a better experience. It will be demanding. It will be a little tough on you, but it's just for a moment. And after that moment, I tell you the truth, you'll be better off. Okay, you'll be far much better off. Okay, you'll be far much better off. All right. Okay, so now that we are here and all of this shown, let, let's quickly hear from Gezini, please. Genzini, in case I did not pronounce it well, please forgive me. Let's hear from you, sir, Omar. Genzini. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm, I'm Genzini Arigo. Okay. I'm a graduate of economics and I'm currently a seven copper in okay. Kano State. Okay. So I've heard so much about um, project management from my lecturers and also from other of my friends. So I felt it's, um, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it would be a good start for me or a place where I could develop myself in for um, my future or for my career. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of us here that are serving core members, well, you're welcome. Um, I will want to encourage those of us that uh, maybe opportunity might be around us. Please, core members, find a way to network with people who have the opportunities you're looking for. Uh, network very well. Uh, remember, was it um, August last year? A young core member joined us from, uh, is it Quara State? 
And after that class, there was someone who was um, an MD for a particular company in Lagos. After that class, the young man was invited to Lagos, and that was how he resumed work in that company. So please, call members in case you have need for career networking. So I believe there are quite a number of people here who have uh, the network to help. All right. Okay. So from Rose Abena, she said to develop my soft skills in project management to enable me with project contracts. Okay. Thank you. So now that we have all uh, drafted our expectations, shall we now see what we have here? Let's go through this uh, simple case study and then we'll review it together. Apollo Incorporated is a leading IT giant. Ian Mitchison is a project manager in Apollo Incorporated. He is responsible for meeting the clients for every new software development project that comes to Apollo. Please carefully follow through. Radisson Telecommunications, a leading telecom service company recently came to Apollo to have new Java-based database software to be developed for them. Ian carefully reviewed and analyzed Radisson's requirement and came up with a project plan. Now, the only thing that I needed to go ahead with starting the project and develop the software was the client approval of the project plan. I held a meeting with the client to discuss the project plan and gain overall approval for the terms and conditions of the project. The client discussed the scope of the work with I. However, the client was not very sure about several aspects of the software that they wanted to get developed. Ian thought of starting the project with whatever information he had gathered from the client. He ultimately agreed to finish the project as per the limited uh, information provided by them. When the project was under progress, Ian and his team realized that the scope that he had agreed upon are nearly impossible to meet due to several technical difficulties, as well as due to lack of clarity of the scope. Ian had to contact the client at every stage of the project development to understand their requirements and gain clarity on the same. Due to this uh, constant to and fro of communication regarding scope and several iterations of the same task, Ian and his team were not able to complete the project as was promised to the client. Due to this delay, Apollo Incorporated had to pay some penalty for late delivery. Also, the client added new requirements that had to be incorporated in the software. However, Ian had not negotiated about the terms with the client for further enhancement or features being added to the software. Hence, Apollo had to incur a loss in the project because the scope of work had increased and the terms of the project had not been negotiated well. Also, Ian's team was forced to work seven days, even from home, to try to complete the project. Why do you think IS team had to suffer? Why did Apollo have to incur a loss in this project? So we've just presented a simple case study and we'll review it. So when we say prepare a case study, this is an example of what we mean. You draft a case study relevant to what we want to learn or what has been taught so that we can easily learn from it. Okay, so we've shared the story of uh, Apollo Incorporated. Why do you think Ian's team had to suffer. And why did Apollo have to incur a loss in this project? Now, let's discuss on this. First of all, I want to ask, is there anyone that you had this kind of experience before? You had a project that you were not completely uh, sure of the scope, and the client is not sure of the scope, and the, the client told you a scratch of the scope and you went into the project, maybe because you needed a contract or you needed money. And for every day, something new is coming. And every day, the one you worked yesterday is no longer relevant today. So it, keep change, it kept changing. And then at the end of the day, you did not deliver. And then the client is on your neck. The client is calling you all manner of names, giving you all manner of queries, giving you all manner of uh, threats. So how many of us have ever had this kind of situation before? If you've ever had this kind of situation, can you please raise your hand? You can just raise your hand or you can type 
uh, one who are in the chat room, if you've had this kind of experience before, a uh, similar experience, maybe not actual, actual, but similar, you can type one when the chat room. You can type one when the chat room. So we have Mr. Maruf who has similar, has had similar experience. Any other person? People give you work, they are not sure of what they gave you, and then you're trying to get understanding. The more you try to get understanding, the more what they think they do keep changing. Okay, okay, so Akin Tayo said he or she had a similar experience. Ademi had similar experience. Okay, any other person who had similar experience? Now, the truth is, if you are really a project manager or maybe project manager by practice or project manager by experience, there is no way you wouldn't have had this kind of experience. Your company always has work, you meet clients on a daily basis, you, you must have had this kind of experience, okay? And sometimes we, some of us project managers or assumed project managers, we don't have, let me say we are not emotionally intelligent to handle such issues when they come up. So when such issues come up, we try to deal with these issues in the true sympathy rather than empathy. And that's what really gets us into problem. Now, if you look at the case, number one, um, this guy, I am mixing, he had drafted a plan, approval plan. He had drafted terms of reference. He had drafted the assumed scope, which he required the customer to sign for him to proceed. Obviously for him to have started with his team, it simply means that the customer signed off. Now, before the customer signed, the question is what really did the customer sign? Because if at the end of the day, the scope kept changing and you needed to call customer every now and then to get clarification, that means there was a problem with your charter, your terms are reference that was initially signed. So let's quickly discuss this before we move on. So why do you think, now that we, we all of us have this, or most of us have these similar experiences. Why do you think IS team had to suffer? The team, why do you think they had to suffer? Those guys worked seven days and they were had to work from home. So why do you think they had to suffer? Let's get uh, the feedback. If you want to give a voice, please feel free, raise your hand. I think we'll prefer more of voice so that we can all uh, have. Uh, he said they did not get from uh, Adel Mikelev, he said they did not get the requirements clearly before delving into it and agreeing to it agreeing to add an aspect that was um, not stated or agreed upon in the initial requirement collected assumption. Okay, so that's that's a problem. Eh? That one is, a, is in fact, is a big problem on, on itself. Assuming that you know what the client wants is a big problem. And there is one thing in project management. Yes, we have assumptions in project management, but assumptions we do in project management, assumptions are based on research, assumptions are based on references, assumptions are based on expert judgment. So even if you want to assume, you would have taken due process, okay? Okay, so let's uh, hear from uh, architect. From Babatunde, they say the problem emanating from the non-clarity of information. From Anthony, say the scope of the job was not properly defined. Okay, so architect, can we hear from you, sir? Please, can you omit? Let's hear from you. Architect, Adeyemi, can you omit? Let's hear from you. Yeah, I have. Um, once again, um, good day, everyone. Welcome, I think sir. Um, in my own experience with um, dealing with clients, especially in a professional setup, sometimes, you know, in the Nigerian context, you don't have, nothing is done pari per se, as per by the book. So sometimes you meet uh, a very uh, wealthy benefactor and you cannot say no to that person. Maybe he says, uh, design a shopping complex. All of a sudden he comes, he says, uh, change this thing here. You cannot say, no, this is not in the, what would you agree? Because this person has been your lifeline in terms of uh, your conduit of getting jobs. So I think that's what happened. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, <laughs> we still get to that, uh, those kind of conditions now. But what you said is what it could be, if not the number one, it could be one of the major reasons why that project went that way. Okay. Then Gabriela said they use the water slide approach and not the agile approach. All right. 
So we have uh, reasons why the team suffered. So the team is suffering because of primarily lack of unclarified scope. Unclear, the scope was not in any way clarified. So there is a possibility that um, you come to work today, they tell you what to do. By the time you go home, they call you and say, oh, please, wait, 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 don't do that again. Do this one. Or maybe you are almost rounding up on what they gave you. And then a call just came in and said, please, hear me? We are sorry. Uh, this client, you know this client now, you know how he used to behave. Please kindly adjust this thing. Change this one. Don't do this one again. This is the new thing. Ah. So that non-standardization of the scope is a major problem. It's a major problem. And obviously changing it often and on was giving headache to those guys. Now, I said, why did Apollo have to incur a loss in the project? Now, I, I, I want us to look at this critically. Why did Apollo have to incur a loss in this project? Why did Apollo have to incur a loss in this project? We have seen the reason why the team was a little stressed. Now, why was the the, why do they still need to incur loss? Okay. From Mr. Suleiman Okunuga, he said, the contractors seem not to give enough professional advice to the client at the beginning of negotiation. They ought to have noticed the naivety of, of the client. Okay. You know, in project, we don't assume that the, the, that the client is a professional. And that's why research Feasibility study is very, very important. Okay, visibility study is very, very, having access to information that will help you take decisions is very, very important. Okay, it's very, very important. Okay, um, so why did they incur cost? Gabriela said, I think this has to do with uh, integrity. Okay, Maru said budget had been designed. Okay, yep, budget could have been designed and feast. Yeah, that's possible. Okay. Um, which, other, which other reason? Gabriela said, backing out of the project as at the time would be the next to impossible to do. All right. So they have to, they have to fight and secure their integrity. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anthony said, uh, incurred cost because of low costing. All right. So there's a possibility of low costing since they were not completely sure of the scope, they could have underestimated the project. Okay. Could there be any other reason? Uh, Babatunde said, inability to have a meaningful blueprint. Thank you. That's, that could also be one of the reasons. Okay, that could also be one of the reasons. Okay, now for the fact that the scope was not defined, that means the budget we are raising was not, um, was not on something we could count on, right? There was no basic foundation. There was no basic blueprint. There was not um, a decisive data that could have been used, right? Okay, so that alone can result to uh, additional cost. But I want to add the third question. How would Apollo have reduced the risk of additional cost? Irrespective of the fact that, yes, the scope might not, be, might not have been well known, is there a way they could have reduced the risk of this additional cost coming in? Is there a way of reducing the risk of this additional cost coming in? How could they have reduced this risk? Um, and then Mikhail said, go back to the table with the client. Okay, thank you. Could there be any other way they could have tried? Stakeholder engagement is key. So going back to the drawing board uh, is, is very important. But you know, some customers or some clients can be head bent. They say, oh, we've given you the budget and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh -huh. Okay, so review the options available, thank you. Could there be any other way? For those of us that have been in project, how do you handle these kind of things? Maruf said, consider alternative approach to deliver the same uh, outcome. Can you tell us this? Let's not generalize it. Can you tell us exactly? We have a case on ground. So what approach can they take? Uh, Babatunde said, having a concrete agreement and proper feasibility study. Okay, so this concrete agreement and proper feasibility study will be pre to signing of the contract and what have you. Now that they've entered into the contract, okay, could there be another way they could have used to reduce the risk of cost in the process that this uh, contingency has arise or arose? Is there a way they can manage this? 
Gabriel has said, uh, since padding the budget is impossible, review other options and bring it to the client for, okay. So what other options can we bring? We want to be much more specific, okay? What options can we bring? Okay, what options can we bring? Um, Adem, say, can you please go back to the second slide on Apollo? Why not? Let's find the second slide on Apollo. So, so where is Apollo? Hmm. I'm trying to get the second slide. Okay. So I think this is the first slide. This is the second slide. Is this is this the one you you request? Sir? So this is the second slide. What possible way could they have used? What possible way could they have used to manage this? The risk has already occurred. Eh? How can they further reduce? the risk of this additional cost. How can they reduce the risk of this additional cost? Okay, so while we are brainstorming on this, um, I will ask one simple question. Okay, Maruf said, out of contract discussions or MOU adjustments, Okay, I love that. I love that. That's that's good. That's good. Okay, but let me ask one uh, simple question: How many of us follow legal procedures when, or include legal procedures uh, when we are following contract? How many of us do? How many of us? you follow legal procedures? Uh, you get a lawyer or you have a, a you have a lawyer who you can always involve in your project or a lawyer who serves as an adjunct team member okay so Ademi said i do maru said i have i have learned to okay 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 now um all of the options we, we, we have given, they are all wonderful options, right? They're all beautiful options. Try alternative uh, uh, resolution um, to see how to fix the issue, uh, re adjust the MOU and all of that. But importantly, this is part of project management. This is part of project management. This is this I'm saying now is part of project management. And that part of project management is called risk project risk management. Okay, project risk management. Now, for the fact that risks are eminent in projects, there is always a need for standard project documents. And part of the standard project document has to do with terms and referencing. And these terms and referencing has to do with most often what need to be done how it should be done who does it then there are places for agreements okay there are uh, places of uh, the, the your part of the uh, uh, elements in your standard document should be agreement now in case you don't have a lawyer as part of your team we recommend you getting a lawyer, either as a member of the team or an adjunct team member. If you don't have a lawyer, as it were, it's recommended that you get a safety officer, a safety officer who will analyze the situations and give you feasible and practical advice before you enter into signing the contract. If you would get a lawyer, and you won't get a, a, a HSC professional, then we encourage you to get a management consultant, preferably a project manager to help you. Okay, please just a moment, I'll, I'll be back.
Sorry for that slight break. Okay, so it's important we get lawyers. Now, there are so many of us here that could have similar situations and um, we didn't carry lawyers along when we were doing all those contracts, signing of those documents. Even in the feasibility study, we didn't engage lawyers. Then when this issue now come up, you now go and engage a lawyer. That's a reactive approach to re resolving issues. The best approach is include legal aid in the process so that they will give you counsel. Most often, we don't recommend you using financial people because they may be biased because of budget and because of what they want to get in. That's why most of what um, we don't really recommend, um, or maybe I'm biased about it. Me personally, I'm not saying standardly. Me personally, I prefer you use people who money will not influence that much. Eh? Finance, those in finance, as soon as they start seeing money, they can easily be, they can easily change their mind on certain things and they start telling you, why don't you take this project? Eh? But a lawyer will give it a holistic view. A management consultant will give it a holistic view. And, and that this, I'm saying now, these are part of the things we'll deal with in the fiscal class, okay? So that we stop all these things. If you take a proactive step, you will stop these things from coming. And I want to say this now very plain. It's not all contracts. It's not all projects that you take as a project manager or as a contractor or as a management consultant. No, it's not all projects that you take. That's if you're an independent project manager and you're practicing like an architect and daily, it's not all projects that you take. When you view the scope of the work, please, if you look at it and this is going to be a case that my, at the end of the day, what you think you'll be gaining, that's not what you're losing. It's better you shift it to someone else and perhaps get a legal person involved. There is this kind of faith clients have when the stakeholders involved, there is an arbitrator in between them. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? There is an arbitrator in between. If there is an arbitrator, um, clients tend to have some kind of confidence. Okay, they tend to have some kind of confidence and on both sides, everyone will be covered. Someone said legal representation helps all stakeholders know their professional limits. All right, thank you. Okay, then another thing that I will want us to observe here in this case study, if you look at this case study, it's almost like iron and his team, iron and his team, iron and his team, iron, okay, iron his team, the stakeholders, I, sorry, iron his team, the client, iron his team, the client, iron his team, the client. Do you think there is something wrong with that kind of um, issue? Do you think there is something wrong with that kind of relationship? Do you think it's the perfect way to have gone or there should have been a better way? It's always iron, his team, client, iron, team, client, iron, team, client. Do you think there would have been a better structure, better administrative structure that will help resolve these issues or perhaps give a more overview maybe would have reduced the risk of additional cost and of all of the issues they face. Do you think there is a better structure they would have used? If yes, what would the structure would have looked like? I hope we're all together. Do you get my question? Please, if you got my question, kindly type one one in the chat room. If you got the question I just asked now, kindly type one one in the chat room. Okay, so you got the question. The, the primary stakeholders there were IN, team, uh, IN team, and client. So do you think that would have been the perfect structure or the uh, perfect project structure for this project? Or do you think there would have been a better structure that would have better resolved issues as they come up? Do you think the, the what they have is the perfect structure or there should have been a better structure? Okay, so I'm seeing the hand up. Please, um, Mr. Demi, kindly omit a letter from you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, from what you've analyzed, it actually shows that um, the mediation, they, they had no mediation or mediator that would 
help them reduce whatever they were passing through because they got to a point they were facing a lot of issues that it looked as if they had no control of the circumstances surrounding them. The agreements, the, the requirements, everything was no more as it was. The scope was no more as they planned it and everything. And instead of actually doing the right thing at this moment, because of the kind of relationship they've been having with the client, so with the, uh, the client. Now it looked as if there is, there is uh, the client now has the power over them since they started without control, started without a proper structure. So like from what we've analyzed uh, uh, um, before now, it shows that if they had had like somebody who is in between a legal person, he knows the limits, he will tell, better tell Ian and his team and even the company Apollo to say, don't worry, we would handle this legally. So now they will be the ones to meet the client. Now, these have been the issues that, that we've discovered this about this project and there is need to come to terms on this. So if there are clear terms stated, somebody mentioned MOUs, going review MOUs is not an easy thing. So it requires some legal procedures and arrangement, good arrangement to sit down, well arranged and talk again about what is happening and how to resolve them. So Iron and his team would not even need to interface much. All they need to see is the results and documents stating the next process or next level of events. Then the management of Apollo also would have to make sure that there is a team interfacing, which would be a business team, because from what I'm seeing, it is more of a technical thing. So there is need to have a business team, a legal team, interfacing with Apollo's, not just Iron and his team, so that it can reduce the stress on them. So they fully well-monitored uh, structure as would be stated, if that was on ground. Thank you so much for that uh, contribution. Okay, practically, practically, if you, if you are a contractor or you've been carrying out projects, there's always this tendency of trying to do everything by yourself. Even within the team, some of us try to lord uh, over our team. <laughs> so our team has little or no influence. And that structure can be very, very devastating. Now, if you really want to have a good structure, that, the structure that Ian has obviously is not the best. Because when the, team, when the client came back, there was nobody that Ian could fall on. So everything was between Ian and... Uh, and um, what the, and the, and the clients, all right? Okay, now we will still look at what we call the project management office. Some of us, when we are going for contracts, we will have this idea of uh, let me just do it all myself. If I bring in another person, we'll not have to share the money, we'll have to share the profit, we'll have to share the glory, share this, share that. Well, also note that when the risk come, you'll be the only one to share it. Uh, so importantly, when you're going in for this kind of project, in fact, any kind of project, no matter how small or big they might be, number one, uh, have your team. You are the project manager, yes, have your team. Then have a board, we we'll call them professionals. Okay, have a board of professionals, at least two or three persons. The two or three persons you're bringing to your board, they are not part of your team. They are just like advisors. So you're not paying them to be there. That's why it's good to have good network. Okay, we asked some people to bring professional reference and they said they are independent people. We asked them to go and get from their networks, right? So those kind of people, what happens is that when you have hinted them on the project, you bring them in uh, to serve as advisors, Remember, they will be part of the people interfacing with clients at some point, not at all times. So that when issues come up, they will serve as witness. You've heard of the word witness before, right? Uh -huh. They will serve as witness. Apart from the advice they will give you, should there be anything that comes up, they will serve as witness. And part of those professionals, there should be a lawyer inside. If possible, there should be an experienced management consultant inside then you can get an, uh, someone else that is uh, not a consultant, that is not a legal person, uh, should also be able to be a, but has experience. 
The person might not be a management consultant, might not be a lawyer, but has experience relevant to the project you're conducting. Now, if all these things are to be in place, you find out that IAM would have had better advice, IAM would have had um, better agreements, IAM would have been able to carry out this project, even if this, the, the customers were to bring in um, uh, additional requirements the lawyer or the advisors would have known better way to advise IN to go on that aspect, okay? All right, so never do it alone. Never try to do it alone. And by all means, don't do it alone. Get the experts to join forces with you. All right, very, very important. Okay, someone's hand is up as architect Ademi. Please kindly omit a lesson from you, sir. From Gabriel, yeah, um, sorry, sir. From Gabriel, as he said, I need to add that though having risk and compliance team is necessary, uh, how do small PM project management consultancy handle this situation? Okay, we'll come to that. Okay, please, architect, go ahead. Um, in, in my own view, yes, sir. Um, Ian, Ian is the staff of um, Apollo, I guess, and um, the organization is undertaking to do a software for another company. Yes. Now, in this scenario, I'm wondering why is, um, as you mentioned, Ian has been taking the bulk of the challenges. Mm. I would have thought the organization's uh, legal department would have been involved in these negotiations mm. at the beginning, whereby if there were changes in scope, the legal department should have been like um, the authorizing department to, 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 to give IN the backup to continue or not. So there was no mention of that. So that gap was there. Okay. Now IN being a staff of Apollo cannot, in my own view, undertake anything in terms of client relationship, except maybe the organization had mandated him to. So hence, he has to, there will be someone he's reporting back to, being the project manager in the organization. But whereby it has to be maybe, because that's the scenario as um, described here, yes. to, my, to the best of my knowledge. Now coming to some of us, we had experiences like this, especially when you're getting contract with government. Mm -hmm. You know, because the governor is, uh, maybe you're dealing with the governor and he's all in all. In this kind of case, I would have thought there must be like a work project management call project sponsor or someone that can interface between someone powerful enough that has the ear of the client and also sympathetic to your cause as the contractor. Hence, mm -hmm. such a person will can mediate, not uh, having to go legal to such an extent. That's my own contribution. Okay, thank you so much, architect. That observation is a valid one. Now, if we go back to this story or this case, he said Apollo Incorporated is a leading IT giant. I, I, I am mixing is a project manager in Apollo. Now, if you notice the narrative, it's always uh, IN and his team. So there's a possibility that IN mixing is even the owner of the company. And if he doesn't have, um, if he doesn't have um, good knowledge about business management, he might not know what we call legal people, legal team or what have you. He might not even talk about board or project sponsors as the case may be. Okay, so there is a possibility here that IN is the sole decider, the sole decision maker of that, um, uh, of the Apollo Incorporated. Okay, there is every possibility that he is the sole owner of Radis, uh, Apollo Incorporated and then he, he is the one teaching the project. So if that be the case, that means there is a possibility that Apollo could be a startup firm or maybe a company that is privileged to have network that give them projects like some, some consulting firms do. They have network of people worthy of projects in volumes of millions of dollars, as the case may be, okay? So he had not experienced this before. So now he has experienced it. 
And now you have to sit down and maybe start. In fact, I need to take a course in project management to understand how such things need to be done. Okay, that's one. Then there is a question here that Gabriela asked. She said, I need to add that though having a risk and compliance team is necessary. Then how do small project management consultants handle this situation? Well, there is what we say in project uh, or general business management. We say, no, we don't have a situation where one size fits all. Okay, one size fits all. If you look at some organizations, small startup organizations, the power of startup is actually essentially on the network of people around them as maybe directors uh, or members of the board. Okay, most uh, SMEs, if they really have good knowledge about starting a business and they went into it, their strength lies more on their directors the competency of the directors, the network of directors, the network of directors, the, 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 the influence and affluence of the directors, that's, that's what. So if you as a startup company want to deal with this from the scratch, it's good you have um, a board that you can easily fall onto in cases as this, okay? Uh, most often, some of the members of our boards for those small and medium scale enterprises. Some of the members of our board happen to be our mentors. These are people who are willing to advise us, who are willing to help us. They don't, as it were, they are not really uh, careful about money, okay? They know that, okay, if you get to be better, then you will definitely get to come back and appreciate them. So they are there to stand by you, there to support you. So if you have a good board, that will serve. If you don't have a good board, maybe you're running it by yourself, then there will be an issue. You have to go back and uh, start looking for legal help. Okay. All right. Is there anything here that you would like to ask question? We've actually discussed project management now using this scenario. Is there any question for me here or something you would like me to pinpoint? Um, in the next few minutes, we don't summarize this. We'll take a few, a few minutes break and then we'll be back. Okay. Did someone learn something from this situation we just presented now? Okay, so if you have any, um, Gabriel, I said, please, what methodology was used? <laughs> okay, so I'm seeing a question. Uh, Gabriela asked, her, please, what methodology was used in this case? Okay, so this is a case. <laughs> we don't know the method they used. Okay, we don't know the method they used. But like I said earlier, we have a situation. We have a situation of no size fits it all. Okay, no size fits it all. But let's go through um, the whole uh, summary of what we've done so far. And then, uh, where, where did we stop? Let's know what they did. Okay, so from here, yes, all this happened because Ian had not handled the project well, right from the beginning, where the requirement and scope of the project should be collected from the client in detail and with great clarity. I have failed to collect the detailed scope of the work. He also did not discuss all the aspects of the project, such as change of scope and later additions and enhancements to the software with the client. If IN had clearly discussed and negotiated the terms of the project with the client and negotiated to complete the scope of work, Apollo would not have needed to pay any penalty or would not have incurred any loss in this project. Hence, you understand that project management is a crucial aspect of uh, completing any project successfully and it is the project manager's responsibility please note this it is the project manager's responsibility to lead a project team from start to its successful completion very very important okay so that's um, all about that however we've shared some of the 
from our experiences, we've shared some of the basic professional ways that I am would have handled this, right? Okay, so now let's look at the class of today. We'll be going on break by 12. Uh, we'll only take like um, 10 minutes break and then we'll be back. Please, you, you can decide to stay online while we just go on that short break and back. All right, so quickly, let me do some, or let us do some definitions and then we'll go on break. So in this class, we will define using simple terms what a project is, project life cycle and project management in general, then provide a practical approach to what many consider a complex process, which is the, pro the management of projects. We we'll also simplify We we'll also simplify the management process required to manage a project successfully from start to finish. Now, by introduction, uh, we'll be looking at what is a project, what is project management, and then we'll look at the related endeavors of project management. Now, what is a project? What is a project? Can we all uh, give this a shot? Someone said in the chat room, Mr. Suleiman, he said, I don't understand the penalty payment for a project that had a signed agreement. Please, could you explain? The question is, what is in the agreement? If the agreement does not cover for change, eh, the agreement does not cover for enhancement. The agreement only specifies that the total project cost is this, and then you signed off. Obviously, enhancement will come, and then the, the agreement will not cover for those things. That's why we say, it's good you get a third party or uh, members of the third party to help assess the situation. Even if you had an agreement, MOU, and the MOU does not cover for in case of change, because if you've approved the budget and the budget did not talk about changes, what will happen to the budget if change occurs? That means the project will go on even if the change occurs, all right? Okay, so now quickly, let's review this. What is a project? In your own time, what is a project? I will take only two people, they will proceed. Others can be dropped in the chat room. What's the project? In your own view, what is the project? Please don't search through the internet. Don't search through any document. Don't search through anywhere. Please, what is the project? In your own view, the view you came with. Eh? Don't add anything to it. The view you came with, what is the project? What is the project? If your hand is up, I will appreciate that. If you're typing in the chat room, that would be awesome. What is a project? Okay. Architect Ademi, please kindly unmute and let's hear from you. I would think the project is something undertaken to get a result. Okay, something undertaken to get a result. That's beautiful. Okay, um, Thomas. Is this Thomas from Lagos? Thomas, please kindly unmute and let's hear from you, sir. I've done that now. Hello? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Please unmute, sir, so that we can hear you. I've done that. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I think you are unmuting and muting yourself. Yeah. So I'm going to send you another request to unmute. So can you unmute? Okay, go ahead, sir. I've done that now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I said project is um whatever it, anything one is delegated to do. And it's within the person's responsibility to get it done within a particular period of time. Okay. Thank you so much, Uncle Tom. Good to have you around. Okay. Let's check the chat room. Okay. So, um, from what we have here, Anthony said project is a product or service that has a beginning at the end. Thank you. Um, Suleiman said any endeavor embarked upon for specific end 
is it project? Okay, thank you. From Ademi Kaleb, he said, um, okay, I think he only made a comment towards, uh, towards uh, Thomas. Okay, Rose Abena said, a task given to be completed within a period. Um, let's get more. Task given to complete to be completed within a period of time. Uh, Alvin Ma said, project is a task that has a beginning and the and the end. Genzini said he is thinking, he's thinking that a project should be Genzini. Where is Genzini? Genzini is thinking, is thinking, is thinking. Let me get Genzini. Okay, Gazini said, I think a project simply a planned agenda that is yet to be fulfilled. All right, thank you. Maruf said, a project is any series of activities that has objectives and is geared towards delivery of those objectives to give results. Shortest, best time, high efficiency, high efficacy is important for success. Thank you. Gabriela said, I feel a project is a task. Sorry. Gabriela is feeling. Um, Gezeni thought, Gabriela felt that project is a task, uh, could be tangible or intangible, that one needs to complete within a given budget and a specified time. All right, thank you so much for all of the contributions. Uh, all of the contributions are great and they are all correct. <laughs> okay, remember my role is to facilitate learning, right? So you see, I said in the beginning that we are not here because we do not know. We just know, but we just want to be sure. You see, uh, Gezini thought, uh, Gabriela felt. Uh, so by the time we are done, we now know which one. So what is a project? If you can, please, if you have, if you have a writing, Eight beside you, I would like you to draw a triangle for me. Okay, if you have a writing aid close by, I would like you to draw a triangle. Draw a very simple triangle, uh, equilateral triangle, all sides equal. Then on one side, please note, not on one angle, on one side, write scope. On another side, write time, you can put in bracket schedule. Then on the other side, write budget. In bracket, you can write resources. So on one side, you write scope, or you can put in bracket planned activities. On the other side, you write uh, time, in bracket, you can put schedule. On the other side, you write budget, uh, on the bracket, you put resources. Then at the middle of the, at the middle of the, at the middle of the triangle, you write quality, 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 quality. Please, if you've done that, kindly type one one in the chat room. If you've done that, kindly type one when the chat room. Okay. So Caleb has done that. Who else has done that? Thomas has done that. Rose. Had, uh, okay. So basically, everyone has done. If you did not get what I said, you should write. Can you write raise zero zero so that someone can help you? If you did not get what I said, you should draw. Kindly type zero zero in the chat room so that someone can help. Okay. So that triangle you have in your hand now is the definition of project and is also the definition of project management is also a basic template for project execution. So I said, you should draw an equilateral triangle, equilateral, equilateral triangle. On one side, you write scope, scope, X-C-O-P-E, scope. Uh, in bracket, you could put planned events. And then um, on the other side, you write uh, time. In bracket, you put schedule. 
Is it schedule or schedule? Whichever one that uh, is best to you. Uh, then on the other side, you write um, budget. Then in bracket, you can write resources or finance, as the case may be. Then at the middle, you write uh, quality. Okay, now with that template uh, uh, by your side, can you now redefine what you initially wrote? Can someone look at that template and then give us or, or modify the definitions that have already been presented so that we can have the exact definition? Can someone use the template by your hand? I say that template is project. Yeah? Those are the things that make up a project. Can someone use that template and then redefine what the project is? With that template by your hand or by your side, can you look at it critically and then define what the project is? Can someone try? If you want to raise your hand, raise your hand. If you want to use the chat room, you're welcome. Hope we are still together. Now, someone look at that, uh, what we have there, and then redefine what a project is. Okay, so someone has finally raised his hand. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kellem, can you unmute the laser for me? I just want to try. Okay. Yes. Um, from this template you've given, I can say a project is a task that involves, um, that has a scope that has a scope, time or schedule attached to it and budget with quality in mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. That's really beautiful. <laughs> That's very beautiful. Okay, so from Thomas, he said, a uh, project, uh, let me hear, the project is the quality of scope, that is, uh, a planned event within a particular budget and is time bound. Thank you so much. We are getting there correctly now. Um, Gabriela said, sorry for clarity. Sorry, for clarity purpose, please, sir. Can you draw it on the white board? Uh, okay, so you want me to draw it? Okay. So let me get my drawing tools. I guess you can see my whiteboard. I guess everyone can see my whiteboard. Okay, so this is the triangle I want you to draw. Then on one side, as you will see here, just one side. So I may not be able to position this well. So you have scope or planned activities. Then on the other side, you have um, time or schedule. Then on the other side, you have project or in bracket. So six slash finance. Then inside, 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 we have quality. So Gabriela, I trust this is clear enough now. 
Is there anybody that this is not what you have? If this is not what you have, please, you can adjust it. Okay, Rosa Bena said, um, okay, let me, let me, Adem said, uh, a, a project is undertaking, is an undertaking done to delivery a quality with scope within a specific time and under specific budget. Thank you. Rose Abena said, um, project is planned activities within a, a scope and the budget to be done with quality within a time schedule. Thank you. See, all, all of these things uh, we are saying, they are all correct. Okay. Everything you've said now, after the triangle is correct. Eh? Is there anyone that this is not what you have? This is not, I think um, I was seeing someone's hand up. Um, I was seeing someone's hand up. Maruf, I thought I was seeing your hand up. Did you bring it down? Okay, so in case this is not what you have, kindly amend it like this. Okay, so um, we think we can define uh we can define a project please note all the things you said is correct we just want to make it look um we just want to bring it all together with all the statement that we'll be making since we just want to bring it all together okay so a project please note is a unique temporary endeavor is a unique temporary endeavor undertaking to produce unique set of deliverables under clearly specified time, scope, and budget. A project is a unique temporary endeavor undertaking to produce unique set of deliverables under clearly specified time, scope, and budget. Now, the uniqueness of the deliverable is what we are referring to as quality. Okay, the uniqueness of the deliverable is what we are referring to as quality, all right? So for any project to go on, there must be quality in place and the derivative of quality, quality is derived from customer expectations or client expectations or project objectives. That's where we derive quality from or the need for quality. The quality plan is based on achieving the objectives, the expectations of the client, right? Then the scope is the planned series of activities that we need to carry out to ensure that the quality is delivered. Now, the time or the schedule involved is the proper allotment of time or the effective use of time to achieve the scope that will deliver the quality. Then the budget is to be in parallel with the scope at the time, such that the resources allowable or approved or assigned should be able to deal with the scope at the approved time. Now, if you check all of these things we wrote down here, they are all directly proportional to each other. Anyone that is being affected, the other will be affected. Okay, before I go further, before I go further, our break is supposed to be for 10 minutes before we return, then we'll go for a one hour break and come back by, by two or so. Um, can I take um, five minutes to explain this? Then we'll take five minutes break and come back. Can I take five minutes to explain this a little more? And then uh, five, we'll take five minutes, okay. So, uh, someone said I should define it again. Someone said I should define it again. Please note, the definitions we are giving here, we are not just mentioning the definition, we are explaining the concepts, right? So that all of us can um, stand on the shoes of practice, knowledge to practice, not just knowledge to know, right? Okay. So, a project is a unique, temporary, endeavor. Number one, it must be unique. Number two, it is temporary. Then it is an endeavor. An endeavor simply means it could be a task you decided to go into. It could be uh, 
a development you decide to go into, it could be a business you decide to go into, it could be construction, it could be event, whatever endeavor you want to, or whatever you want to regard as an endeavor from your own perspective, yes, right? So that is a project. So it must be unique, it must be temporary endeavor. Then it must be undertaking to produce unique set of deliverable. That means there must be quality perspective to whatever thing you are undertaking as a project. There must be quality perspective, right? And this quality perspective would be determined by how the work is planned, the time allocated to the scope and the budget available to deal with the work in, in, in question. That's a project is a unique temporary endeavor undertaking to produce unique set of deliverables under clearly specified time, scope, and budget. Did you did you get did you get what I just said now? Do I need to explain this any further? Now, if you go back to what happened to Apollo, you'll find out that because the scope was not sure. Every other thing was affected. The time, they couldn't meet up with the deadline and the budget, they needed to incur additional cost. And when they didn't tell us more about the quality, whether it was still the same quality. In fact, see the customer didn't know what he wanted. Obviously, he might not know when quality is achieved. Okay. So when you're taking on a project, any of these legs, that is, if you pull out one leg here, the other legs will be affected. If you pull out any leg, the other one will be affected. Okay. If you pull out any one, the other side will be affected. Now, I, I will want to clarify some, something here before I proceed. Um, some times ago, uh, I think that should be in May or June, um, someone who went in the class together and the person happens to be a contractor. He said, the reason why he's in this class is not really because he wants to learn anything. It's just because it's part of the requirement now that government is asking people to show professional certificates before they could give them contracts in his own field anyway. That that's why he came, not because he really wanted to learn anything. And there was someone question, one statement he made. He said, you don't need this uh, knowledge to be able to do your project. And when he said it, when he said that the whole class tend to be like, okay, oh what are you really saying? Now, where am I going to? Some of us might be looking at this thing now, like um, what is this thing all about? Practically, this triangle you see has a whole lot of relevance to project implementation. Don't just be like that man, that young man that said, it's just to get the knowledge, get the certificate and go to the ministry and show them that he has gotten the certificate and then a project will be awarded to him, no understand how this works, understand how this particular triangle works, then every project that comes to you, this is just like a simple little most, uh, paper. You can use to test the viability of projects, all right? You can use this to test this little diagram. You can use this, this like a little most paper. You could use to test viability of projects. First, someone told you, for instance, bake a cake, three-step cake for me, just follow me now. Someone came to you and said, bake three-step cake for me. And the person said, I don't want to spend more than uh, 2,000 Naira, or I don't want to spend more than $5. Eh? And he said, I want this cake delivered. The person is telling you now, and he's telling you, I want, can you deliver this cake uh, in the next one hour? Using this litmus paper, you can obviously, scope-wise, it's not possible. Budget-wise, is not possible. Time-wise, is not possible. So you can tell the person, go. Now, let's take another scenario. The person now comes to you and say, I'm going to give you one million error. Yeah? Produce three-step cake for me, but I need it in 15 minutes. Yeah? Ah. One million error can do maybe 50 times of that cake, right? That's right. So resource-wise, you are you're capable. Scope-wise, you might know all the processes involved in doing that cake. But the question is, the 15 minutes, is it possible to get the quality required in 15 minutes? So it might be affected. Then another situation could be that someone could come and say, bake a cake for me. I need it next week. 
Um, uh, I need three step cake by next week, Thursday. Um, and uh, I have, I have 25,000 Naira. Please try and see what you can do for me. Just make sure it is three step cake. And then you see, you sat down with the customer and then begin to explain, okay, three step, three step cake at 25,000 Naira or maybe at $15, this is what it will give you. And the person agreed. Now, looking at the process followed, within one week, will this cake that has been agreed on be delivered? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. So sometimes we could be biased due to some uh, inefficiencies or inaccuracies that may result from lags from any of this part of this uh, uh, constraint. We call these things project management constraints or project constraints. Okay, so if anyone is affected, the order will be, even if you're running an agile project environment and then someone comes with um, an impossible task, impossible, not in the sense that you don't have the scope for it, not in the sense that you don't have the resource for it, but in the sense that maybe your system does not have the time frame or has not been enhanced to accommodate the time frame the person is looking at, that project will not go on. And even if we end up enforcing the project because of the money for, we might end up having quality issues. So this simple diagram is like a simple litmus paper you can use to test the project. Now, what I just used is a simple, um, a simple scenario. There are some scenarios that you may need to do two, three days uh, feasibility or even more or do some research to find out if what is being presented to you is accessible and that's why during during the um, negotiations it's not something you just come out of the blue and say no you need to undertake your feasibility do your research underground research come up with your uh, business uh, uh, justify the business need via the uh, feasibility study the needs assessment must be well conducted to ensure that the project can be completed with ease. All right? Now, I want to be sure, am I making sense at all? If I'm making sense uh, by this triangle I'm trying to explain, now, if I'm making sense, please type yes in the chat room. If I'm not making sense, please, just tell me where I'm not making sense. Okay, so thank God I'm making a little sense. Now, if you have a small project, or if I have a project now, and you want to do a little litmus test on it, can you use this simple triangle to justify? Can you do a little analysis? Can this little triangle use, serve as a little uh, analytical tool you can use to run primary feasibility? Okay, can you use this? If you can, please type one one in the chat room. If you can't, Please type zero zero and then tell us your challenge. Okay, Mr. Demi said, but one thing, you know, I go ahead and tell us the one thing so that we look at it together. Let's look at it together. Meanwhile, why we are uh, why we are getting responses? You know, the other day I was leaving the office <laughs> and uh, I was going with the manager. So for those of us in Abuja that uh, uh which road is that self is it amadu belu way gariki road amadu belu way right okay so we are driving and then someone with good car very good car very clean car i think it was um uh, this latest uh camry the latest camry the young man they were two anyway the the driver went and hit one of those street lights and fell the street light completely. So he hit, that means the, the, the impact was high. So the, the street light fell. <laughs> and uh, they were trying to blame the person that was behind them. The man just navigated himself and went his way. Why those guys were at, at the accident scene? <laughs> okay. So while we crossed my, the manager was not telling me something. He said, sir, do you know what happened here? I said, I don't know. All I know is that they had an accident. They say, sir, these guys are high. They have, they have taken either uh, drugs or they took alcohol. He says, sir, what happened here is that while they were driving, this road became many, 
uh, that, that they demarcated it like three cars in a, in a, in a lane, all right? So is it the, what happened is that they were seeing maybe six or 10 roads at a time. And then as they were trying to drive through one road, one of these poles was not trying to overtake them. So they tried to overtake the pole and hit the pole. <laughs> I said that was that was what happened because when those guys came out, by me looking at them, you know that these ones were not uh, their senses. All right, okay. So that's by the way, anyway. So when people have um, people can have the right tools. That's where I'm going to. I'm telling a story, but I'm driving at something. We can have the right tools and still have accidents. Uh, work accidents and this work accidents might not be the physical resulting to physical injury it could result to scope injury it could result to budget injury it could result to time injury so this simple template if you neglect it it can result to scope injury it can result to time injury it can result to budget injury okay all right thank you so mr adam said you want to clear the area of considering client's budget and the feasibility of time and back to the budget again, the quality. Okay. Do you want to say something? If you want to say something, just raise your hand. Okay. Um, in the in the entry, can we just take a five minutes break? Just stretch in case you've not taken water. Please, you can feel free to take a cup of water. Then we'll return by exactly 12.20. Okay, please don't log out, just stay, hang on. Uh, when we return, we will proceed with uh, the class. Okay. If you have questions, if you have things to clarify, you can use the chat room to clarify, uh, clarify those things. When we come back, we'll look at them. Please remember, we are only taking five minutes. Thank you. All right, we are welcome back. I trust we stretched ourselves well enough. Okay, so let's proceed. Um, we've looked at um, our whiteboard and then we looked at the triangle defining project. So uh, let's quickly um, continue. We'll be going to break by one and then we'll be returning by two. Then we'll run two to four, then we'll go to break and return by five, and then we'll run five to six. All right, okay. So this is the definition of what we were originally giving, that a project is a unique endeavor to produce a set of deliverables within clearly specified budget, time, and specification or scope, which will give you the quality. And this is referred as the triple constraint. It is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service in its simplest form. It is a temporary endeavor undertaking to create a unique product or service. Projects are not businesses. Projects are carried out to either sustain, initiate, or promote businesses. So businesses are, are designed to last as long as, while projects are designed to have a start and finish time so that the business of the project can begin. Now for definition purposes, an end of is an enterprise or a directed activity. It can be an enterprise, it can be a directed activity. Then just like uh, Gabriela said, she said uh, it could be a tangible or intangible. So a, a, a project deliverable can be tangible, verifiable work product. Um, it is a quantifiable outcome of the project which results in a partial or full achievement of the project objective. Examples of deliverable could be feasibility studies, stamps of reference, a detailed design, or a working prototype in others. Then characteristics of a project, because of time, we'll just summarize all of the things we've been learning since morning. Characteristics of project, projects, uh, projects are different from standard business operations as they are temporary, unique, progressive, and elaborate. They also have an approved budget, have limited resources, involved an element of risk, have a defined time scale, and they are set to achieve beneficial changes. For the temporal nature of projects, I've already said that projects have definite start and definite end. 
And then for the uniqueness of projects, projects are meant to have, uh, or projects are meant to be born out of creativity and innovation. All right, so each project being done is expected to be unique. Uh, each project being done is expected to have its own attributes. Okay, we can do the same project in the same environment or even outside of the same environment, but there will still be uniqueness for each of them. The uniqueness could be on the basis of value provided or stakeholders involved or budget involved or risks involved and, and all of that. All right. Okay. Then for the progressive nature of projects, yes, projects are progressive. That means they start small and then they increase if you build, keep building on top of each other. All right, so the activities are a series of activities that are incremental in nature. All right, so they are progressive in nature till you get to the final um, task that will give you the final deliverable. All right. Then project have approved budget, limited resources. We've already um, specified all of those things. Now, I would like to say something. Um, you know, some of us, when we are giving projects, uh, especially that uh, mobilization, some of us spend that money uh, for drinks and all of that, hoping that they will not pay you that you start the project. Please, before you start celebration of project awarded or contract awarded, please, it's important you expand the project efficiently. Eh? In the project budget that you sent, there was no place that you itemized that uh, the mobilization money would be used for flexing, for drinks for calling friends and then when you now pay no please let the money be expended judiciously 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 very very important because as that project is approved if it is not uh, if this uh, project is not done according to the uh, budget approved there will be problem Right. Okay. So someone is asking, will this slide be given to those? Uh, yes. All of the materials will be given. All, all of the materials will be given. All right. In fact, not that they'll be given, they're already available. So as soon as we get the details of those who have paid today, we will include, we'll upload all of the documents in there. So any day you pick, make your payment, you join the Google Classroom, then you download from the class. All right. Okay. Then limited resources. All the resources for projects are limited, including labor, equipment, materials. All of them are limited. Okay. And then a project will have what we call the consumables and the non-consumables. And they could be committed or non-committed. Okay. Um, the consumables are the ones that quantifiably you can quantify them. And then when they are being used, you can say, okay, we've used one bag of cement, two bags of cement, three bags of cement, four bags of cement. So those are consumables. Okay, you can know which quantity is available per time. You can know which quantity have been used per time. And then you have the non-consumables. The non-consumables like advisory is non-consumable. You, you cannot say the quantity of advice that has been given, whether it is one bag of advice or one kg of advice, no, those ones cannot really be quantified but they can be measured, they, their impacts can be measured. All right, their impacts can be measured. Then you have the committed and not committed, yeah. A committed resource is the one that has been assigned to do a particular job. For instance, uh, let's assume that you want to bake a uh, cake and you have measured five cups of flour for the, for the cake. That, if you have one bag of flour, and then five cups is what is needed or are what uh, the requirement demands for the baking. In that case, five cups for the cake to be baked at the moment becomes a committed resource. The remaining quantity in the bag, because they've not been earmarked for any cake at the moment, they are non-committed. So if you want to talk about remaining raw material, you'll talk about the one that has not been committed, but the one that has been committed will be used for the cake at hand. All right. Um, someone is asking, is it, does budget include PRs? Please kindly clarify, PRs here, is it public relations? 
please, if it's public relations, let me know. Uh, no, we we'll still, we we'll still, we we'll still deal with um, project uh, cost uh, with time. Oh, some hands are up. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, I may want to uh, take more of the things in the. My time is almost up, so I may want to take more of the questions in the chat room so that we can just proceed. But as soon as it's one o'clock, I will open up the, the the forum. So those that want to, those that want to keep interacting, we can keep interacting, no challenge, then others can go on break. Okay, say yes, in pursuit of contract. Okay, uh, please note, uh, when you're carrying out a contract, especially those of us that are doing government contract, you will find out that there is a particular percentage that is allowable a particular percentage, some MDAs, they will say 5%, some NDAs, they will say 2% of the total contract sum. Uh, whatever, whatever thing that you're doing, they will ask you to include 2% or 3% or 4%. I think the maximum I've seen so far is 9%, okay? Now, that cost they are giving you, that 2% extra they are giving you, most of it, your PR is there, your, your marketing, your communications, your meetings, all of the pre preliminary uh, things that we are done to get the contract, those that two percent take care of those things. Okay, so when you are including your budget, if the budget is a prorated budget, then you may include the two percent, two percent for PRs. Eh? But if it is a a, a budget that uh, the government, the or the entity, let me not just be specifying on government. It can be anybody. Let me say the organization that is giving you. They are not the one giving you, you've done your technical bids and they've approved the contract, they have, they've approved the money, they've told you the money in question. Eh? Then they are not telling you that, okay, 2% is for you on the other PRs you've done, the lobbying and all of that. Uh, I, I want to ask a question. How many of us know that lobby, the money you use for lobby is should be part of con uh, budget? How many of us know that? You know, we don't want to hear that one, but I'm telling you now, professionally, I'm telling you, and maybe by the time you start reading the codes, professional codes, please, when you get your study materials, please read, read the professional codes. They have actually improved over time. Before, during the fourth edition, 2012, 2013, nobody was talking about lobbying, but now it has become evident that you pay for lobbying. Okay, it's become evident. And the, the names are changing. Some call it facilitation. <laughs> eh? Some call it you facilitate. They'll tell you pro, uh, project facilitation money. Whether you call it facilitation or consultancy or, or kickback or kickoff or lobbying, they are the same thing. The only thing you need to do is make sure that the two percent there or five percent, as the case may be, if it is uh, private organizations, you may you may stand the chance to negotiate the those things, uh, PR and all of those things, you may stand the chance to negotiate them. And, and please, before we get to cost management, now that uh, someone has a question, let's look at it a little. You know, when you're doing your project, there are some things we, we don't put attention to. Let's take, for instance, you are to conduct a project. Let's take um, APDC for a case now. Let's assume APDC want to do an empowerment project for a local government in Kogi State. Eh? And then um, you may go to the local government, they tell you that they don't want the project, but your sponsor wants you to do the project in that local government. You may end up having to do a sit-down sit meeting or what they call a facilitated workshop. In that facilitated workshop, one of the things you may have to use to induce the people is a facilit you need a facilitator who will talk to those people or someone that has influence who will talk to those people and most often it will involve money apart from the money you're using going there to organize you still need money to do those things let me not even go for how many of us have by any means you've been involved in a project that the owners of the land you involved in a public project and the owners of the land told you you won't do anything until you pay for the gods. You, the gods of the land, you have to pay for them. Or there are some social cultural issues, they tell you until you pay for this one, or they tell you this forest you're going to work on. Irrespective of the fact that 
the project is going to bring development, but they are telling you that until you pay the spirit of the gods, <laughs> not even the homunculated, the the spirit of the gods, the the culture and all of those things, you have to settle those things. How many of us have ever faced those kind of issues in our project? Cultural issues, um, of course, cultural sensitivity is a very big case in project management. If you're handling project on big cases, cultural sensitivity is a big, big thing. And you need to facilitate those things. Somebody will need to go and talk to the gods. <laughs> so we don't need, uh, we don't need, uh, we don't need to mention that you spoke to the gods. Just tell us PR, 2% for PR. Uh -huh. We know that, okay, so you, we need to use it to talk to the gods and all of that. Now, uh, okay, now there, there was a project, there was someone who was doing a project for me and he was sharing an experience. And that experience was quite funny. Now he said he his company is into uh, borehole drilling and all of those dredging and all of that. So they got a contract. Federal government gave them a contract in a particular state, in a particular community, which I will not like to mention. Now he said they got to that particular community. They would drill borehole in the morning, in the day. There will be water. By the time they come the next day there will be no water. They will search and search and search, no water anywhere. They will, that's how they will do the defined water, another part of the community. They will now drill. By the, by, they will drill. People will come, have water, they will mount everything. By the time they are coming the next day to commission it, there will be no water anywhere. He said the thing kept repeating for weeks. So they had to come back to Abuja to tell the people what they were facing. Okay, <laughs> and then they, 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 the agency that sent them, they told them to come back first. And when they were going, one old man from the community told them that, that they don't have sense, that they should have come and meet them first, that they didn't tell them that their problem is water. If they had liked, they would have been drilling from now to that kingdom come, there would be no water because the gods of the land say they don't want water. <laughs> So the simple way to have dealt with this thing is facilitation or lobbying, as the case may be. You lobby it. Oh, you go and meet the owners of the, uh, the the people that talk to the gods to talk to the god on your behalf, right? Simple. And you put your water and go your way. Okay. So for those of us that are intending to handle bigger projects, please note that cultural sensitivity is a big case in project handling. Even after you're done with this course in project management, you still go for a course in, in, in a, a cultural sensitivity project with cultural, sensi uh, uh, cultural sensitivity in project. Um, I think it was the last month that we are contacted to come and run a training in Mali, a particular company in Mali. They are into gold mining and mineral resource mining. Now, the, 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 the course that we're going to take for them was cultural sensitivity in projects. Okay, so how do you handle cultural sensitivities as a project manager? So there is a, a course for that one also. Okay, so why we deal with it on a general note, but when you get to your own discipline, know that there is or there are things like this. Okay, hope we are together. If if what I'm saying is making sense to you or you're understanding it in any way, please can you type one word in the chat room so that we can proceed. If what I'm saying in any way is making sense to you, is practical enough, is applicable enough, type one word. If it's not, please, you can, you can state so that we can um, all understand ourselves. Please note, my assignment is facilitation. I'm not the only one that have had these experiences. I'm sure a whole lot of us here have had similar experiences. Even if you are not the project manager, in your village, sometimes ago, maybe there was a time something could have happened. A, a project could have happened, but the villagers came out and said, the spirit of the gods <laughs> are not in support. Or one masquerade will come. If, if you ever went to school in, in Enugu State, UNN, you will understand a little of what I'm saying. There is one uh, masquerade they used to call Uriopa. So if you're a first year student, and first, they didn't, they, they won't tell you that there is a masquerade though, this, this period of the year, don't come out to, you are now a first year student, you just finished from night class and you're coming back and these masquerades invade the school and they start flogging you left, right and center. Ah, As big as UNN is, 
cultural sensitivity is still penetrating inside the school. So someone was sharing an experience. I had a training, or we had a training in KB State. Someone traveled from Jos to KB State for that training. And we were talking on uh, this matter as it were. And the man said that he, he happened to be a civil engineer. He said that where the airport in uh, River State is, that's not the first place the airport was supposed to be. That the first place the airport was supposed to be, uh, that there was a small river, a small river, small, very small river at the place as it were then that the people, the, the engineers ignored the whole thing and estimated a particular quantity of sand they will use to fill up the place, take the water off and build the airport. For he said, for, from days to weeks, from weeks to months, they were trying to fill up the place. They couldn't fill it up. And then the people told them that there is no way they could fill up the place except uh, they consult the gods. And it's like they consulted the gods, it didn't work. So they had to change uh, the location of the airport because of a simple small uh, river. That's how sensitive cultural issues could be. How sensitive cultural issues could be. Okay. We have, all of us have our own experiences, okay, which we might, might have handled well before or not well. Yeah. Someone mentioned Omolile here. Uh, now, there was a, a project, I was to serve as an assistant project, uh, a project assistant to the project manager. It was a rural electrification project in one state in Nigeria. Okay, I will be told the name of the state. Now, the project, I was in natural state as of then, and that project was taking place in the south-south. Okay, the south-south part of Nigeria. And he said, uh, in that village, the few days into the project, the youth came out and told him, oh, you've not seen us. And he said uh, that he has seen their, their kings and all of that, then the kings will pay them. First day, second, the first entrance, second appearance. He said on the third appearance, they beat the project manager to, almost to death. They had to move him from that particular state to another state uh, for medication. Then from the state, they moved him to to back to Lagos. Just cultural sensitivity. There are so many of us, maybe in this class now, that something that spoiled your project was just a little argument between you and the owners of the community, or between you and members of the project, uh, project sponsors team. Just a simple argument, and that led to the whole project was off. We are not doing it again. And money has been buried. <laughs> both your own money and their own money. And there are several people that have died because of cultural sensitivity. Cultural sensitivity is a big time issue in project handling, project handling. Okay, I will prophesy that for all of you here in this class, that after this class, you'll be handling projects not only all across Nigeria, but across the world. Maybe it's at that time you understand what I'm trying to say now. You are from, uh, they say you are from, uh, you're from, uh, you're from the Kitty State. And then they sent you on a project in Kano State. In Kano State, uh, you will understand better when you go there. No matter how intelligent you are, when you get there, you need what we call emotional intelligence and social intelligence. You need those kind of intelligence to deal with those people or to deal with your stakeholders there so that the project will be done effectively and efficiently. Okay, that's very, very important. All right, um, whoever that asked that question, thank you for asking that question. I hope I can proceed now. If I, if I should proceed, please type uh, one one in the chat room. If there is any place you need clarity, please call my attention. We will clarify ourselves before we go. And someone say, yes, sir. EQ and SQ is needed, okay, thank you. Okay, so let's proceed then. So we've defined element of risk. Of course, cultural sensitivity on this own. Cultural, we have cultural risks. So if you are not socially intelligent and not emotionally intelligent, um, in fact, more importantly, social intelligence. If you're not socially intelligent, you won't be able to deal with cultural things. And you know, there had been a whole lot of uh, conflicts between religion and culture. 
you know there had been a whole lot of uh, conflict between religion and culture so you you left your place let's assume you are a particular your, your faith is in particular religion and then you travel to another location where they are now having the African traditional religion. You say no, that your faith should superimpose their own. It's better you lose that job than to go there and cause trouble. Eh? They say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And so immediately you, 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 you pick up the role as a project manager. Your assignment is to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to the stakeholders what belongs to Caesar. That's all your work. Don't go there and bring uh, uh, your own culture or your own religion. Don't go there and say, in my place, this is how we used to do it. No. Where you are is no longer your place. You have to blend. That is what we call cultural adaptation. You've heard of cultural adaptation before. You need to adapt to that place to be able to carry on the work with ease. Very, very important. Well, these are things we, we, we face every day. So all of those risks, please learn to deal with them. Okay, so every project needs to provide beneficial changes. For organizations, there, there is a purpose for which a project is initiated. And that purpose is to provide a change. If the purpose is achieved, then a change will result, all right? Now, it's a very simple clarity between projects and operations. Simple clarity between projects and operations. Now, whenever you hear of operations, operations are the day-to-day -day activities we carry on in business and the purpose is to sustain businesses and operations are repetitive we do them virtually every, every the same thing every day okay but projects are not uh, repetitive as operations projects have defined time uh, defined goals defined objective and as soon as we achieve them we terminate the project and then secure another one so why operations are repetitive uh, operations are ongoing, operations are done for sustainability reasons. Uh, projects are declared over as soon as the objectives of the project are achieved, and then the results are seen, and then we'll move on. Now, before I proceed, can someone help me? What is the difference between outcomes and outputs? Because sometimes a project management, when we do evaluation, some of us evaluate we, we evaluate the two, but can someone help us clarify? What's the difference between outcomes and outputs? Can someone help us? I, I would really appreciate uh, contributions in this slide because as project managers, we need to know the difference between outcomes and outputs. We need to know the difference so that we, we know how to marry the two together. Okay. Can someone help us? I will need a, if you if you have if you wish to give a voice, please go ahead. If you wish to type in the chat room, go ahead. Okay. Please, Mr. Babatunde Ode Kunle, please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I feel output is used in the business of uh, wise and project, while outcome could be in terms of um, service delivery. That's just my take on it, sir. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, from a day from architect a day, he said outcome is the result. Output should be the byproduct of an activity. Okay. Maruf said output contribute to outcomes. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I would like us to have it very clear enough. Outcomes. When we talk about outcome, we are talking about the impact that the project is bringing, the measurable impact that the project is bringing. That's the outcomes, the outcomes, the impacts that the project is bringing. Why the outputs are the expected results, the deliverables, the, the, the tangible um, products or services that we want to see by the end of the project. Okay, so by this, please, I would need us to understand this very well because, like I said, some project managers are, are yet to understand the difference between these two. Some project managers have outcomes that doesn't 
actually equate, sorry, have output that doesn't really have uh, outcomes that does not equate to outcomes, right? Let's take, for instance, let's assume, please listen carefully to this case study I want to present. Let's assume that someone has been given a contract to construct 200 kilometer road between, let's say there are two local governments in a state, between local government A and local government B. And the objective of this contract is to facilitate trade and business between these two local governments. Now, the situation on ground is that based on the bad nature of the road, people cannot easily move their businesses around or move, trade cannot easily be conducted. And then it has inflated uh, goods, the price of goods and services, um, and then there's scarcity. So the essence of now building the road is to encourage trade. And by encouraging this trade, there'll be fairness in pricing, there will be fairness in uh, uh, trade, all right? Now, the, the construction is 200 kilometer road between local government A and local government B. Now, this contractor had conducted the project and then commissioned the project, but the project only lasted for six months. Then the road went bad again. In fact, it went worse than the first state. Was there an outcome and was there an output? What is the outcome in this case and what is the output? Did you get the case? I, I trust you got the case uh, I'm trying to uh, do. In this case, this, this contractor did this work, but in six months, the road was worse than it was before the contract was awarded to him, all right? Now, was, what is the outcome and what is the output? What is the outcome and what is the output? Okay, someone say, come again. Okay, I said, there is a contract to construct 200 kilometers road between local government A and local government B. And the primary objective of this contract is to ensure um, efficiency and effectiveness in trade and encourage business uh, transactions between these two local governments. The absence of good road had led to bad economy between the two local governments. So they feel like if they could be able to do the road, then businesses will be better off. Prices of goods will be better off. People will, more people will be encouraged to do businesses. Now, the contractor that was given this contract now did the contract. After six months of doing the contract, the road now went worse than his initial stage before the contract was awarded to him. Now, my question is, what is the outcome and what is the output of this project? I hope the question is, is clear enough. Okay, so and then he, uh, and then he said the road constructed is the output of the project. The outcome is that the failed road has further worsened <laughs> the trade situation. Okay, okay, uh, okay. So obviously there was an output, but the outcome is not what we expected from the output. Okay, the road, this road constructed is the output, but the outcome is not what we expected. The outcome would have been improved trade trading, improved economy, improved business transactions and business deals. And they will also expect uh, project durability. The project should have been sustainable to some extent, at least, before we could start talking about maintenance. All right? Okay, so since the project, the, 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 the road did not serve or did not last, we could say the outcome was not there. But was there an output? Yes. Now, if you go back now, if you go back to that triangle, you will now see the place of quality missing. You see the place of quality missing. Okay, the quality was missing. Now, if you look at what really happened, if you look at what really happened, there is a possibility, please listen up, 
there is a possibility that um, the the contractor knew exactly what to do. That means he knew the scope of the work. There was a possibility that the time allocated was enough. And there is a possibility that, is the, that the money was also enough. But the person decided to follow um, unethical ways to do the project. That's on a general note. Now, on another note, following using the triangle to do a simple test, there could be a possibility that the project, the contractor knew the processes or the, the scope uh, have the time, but the finance was not enough. If, you, if you're a government contractor, you may understand a little of what I'm trying to say. Okay, you may understand a little of what I'm trying to say. You could have a contract of 200 million from government and then um, somebody is saying, uh, before I give you this contract, you give me 20 million. And that 20 million is part of the road construction loan. Okay, and maybe they give you 5% of 20, 200 million as, as a, what do they call it now, as a PR and all of those contingencies, which might not be enough. Okay, so that means when you are conducting projects, when you're conducting projects, okay, let me need this. When we get to cost management and stakeholder management, we'll deal more with this. All I wanted to clarify was outcome and uh, output. As a project manager, you should ensure that your projects have outcome, not just outputs. The output should be able to satisfy the outcomes. Okay, the output should be able to satisfy the outcomes, not just on immediate basis, but on sustainable basis. Okay, they should be able to satisfy the outcomes. So by all means, by all means, by all means, as a project manager, one of your codes of practice should be integrity. And integrity is not denying projects because they are not, the money will not be up to, or the time allocated will not be up to. Integrity should be, one of the aspects of integrity is communication, communicate, communicate. They would have said, okay, this project is 200 million, evaluated. Most government contracts, they've already evaluated them and they know how much it will work, right? So they've evaluated whatever thing they want to evaluate. Mm. But your role more often is communication. Do your own feasibility. By the time you're bringing your technical bits, don't worry, we'll, we'll look at contract management later on. I think that should be the last course, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So the, 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 we need to pay attention to outcomes. Some of us that are into training, some of us that are into training, you know, more of what we do is that we produce outputs, including the educational system across the globe. We produce more of outputs, not outcomes. Some of us that are into training. Let's take, for instance, in this training, if at the end of the, this training, all you can carefully brag about is the certificate, then you have an output, all right? But if by the end of this course, you, your performance level has increased, your communication level has increased, your leadership level has increased, your stakeholder engagement level has increased, and then there are better results coming, you now have successive results coming in, then we can say, yes, there is an outcome from this, from this uh, training. Do you, get where I'm, do you get where I'm going to? If at the end of this training, all you have is certificates, you only have output. But if at the end of this training, you have improved your skills, which are evident, evident in the jobs you're currently doing or will do, then we can say that you now have outcomes, you are enjoying the outcomes. But if you stop only a certificate, you only have outputs. Did you get that? Do you want me to clarify anything? Is there anything you want me to clarify? If you got the difference between outcomes and output, please type um, yes in the chat or just type one one in the chat room. If you got the difference between the two, type one one in the chat room. If you did not get it, please. And someone say yes, sir, please use it in terms of a project. All these things I've been explaining, they're all projects now. This training is a project, all right? I said, for instance, if by the end of this training is a project, hope we know, we, we are starting September 11th, we are closing uh, December 3rd. Um, the expected outcomes from this, um, the expected out, out, output rather from this training is that by the end of this training, you should have your certificate. The expected output is that by the end of this training, you should have your study materials, all study materials. 
the expected uh, output is that by the end of this training, you should be a member or should be a professional, certified professional with all your certifications and all of that, right? Those are the expected outcomes. Sorry, output rather. But the expected outcomes is based on the application of the knowledge you've gathered. If by the end of this project, the outcomes we expect that you should be able to have your, uh, based on performance, you should be able to get your promotion. If you want to get better job, you should be able to get a better job. You should be able to improve on service delivery in your organization. You should be able to innovate and create more. Performance should have increased. Leadership abilities would have increased. There will be less quarrels between you and your team members, uh, better communication and all of that. Those are the outcomes. When we see those things, then we we'll say there is an outcome. Do you know what? One thing about IPM is that after you're done with your training, we we'll still follow up on you. You see those names you're giving us. When we will know whether you we have outcome or not is when we call those people and ask how is this this person social person did project management training with us? How is what improvement has he brought? And we not tell your employer to evaluate you. That's where we know the outcomes. The output is your own. The outcome is for everybody. Did you get me? The output is for you. Eh? The outcome is for everybody. Because we say project must produce beneficial change. And that beneficial change is for all stakeholders involved. OK? Mr. Caleb, I'm going to come to you shortly. Gabriela said a mini project. OK, Gabriela, please, can you give us an example of what you mean by mini project so that we can uh, use that? Uh, OK, Mr. Caleb, can you go ahead, please? Yes, I just want to buttress it. I, I use an example that I think was just good enough in a okay. layman's language. Okay. Yeah, you use the road construction project. Okay. So where does the road itself, constructing the road itself, having the road constructed itself fall under output and outcome? It falls under output. That you have a project, Gabriela has a project to construct a road or social kilometer. She did all she could and the road was constructed. What is the effect of the road on the community? Yeah, yeah. Did it serve the purpose? of constructing the road? Can people easily use the road to go to the market? Can, does it make traveling easy? Does it, I mean, solve the problem on ground? That will now come under outcomes. That's right. The so output itself is the road constructed. That's right. Outcome is the effect on those who are involved or the reason for which the road was constructed. So now it now depends on whether it has a positive output I mean, if the output is a positive one or negative, if it is not done well, of course, the outcome will also be a negative output. If it is done well, then the output will also be a positive, I mean, the outcome will also be a positive outcome. So the effect of a project on those who are involved is the outcome. Yeah. While the project itself being established, okay, a road has been constructed. We are not talking about whether good or bad. That thing is the output. Okay, thank you so much. I guess we, I guess we got that uh, well enough. Okay, so uh, my time is up, but I'm going to make a plea. I want this class to stop by 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 two thirty. Since this is our first class, I would like this class to stop by two thirty. So we might have to just take fifteen minutes break, and then we'll be back so that by 2.30, we'll go home. So there will be no evening class today because all of us are just dealing with fundamentals, fundamentals today. Okay, so someone says, can we use example uh, of a mini project like uh, school graduation, uh, school graduation projects? Another person say, can we use a boyhood? So now let's look at it. Let's use the, the examples that have been provided here so that we can analyze it. Schools graduation. Right, schools graduation. The first thing is, um, what are the objectives of the school graduation? From the objective, we can now begin to say the outcome is this, and the output, uh, the output is this, and the outcome is that. Now, let's assume that um, the one of the primary objectives of the school graduation eh, is to send forth the children and then to create um, avenue for 
um, talent hunt. Let's assume, let's assume that part of the things to be included is talent hunt, uh, then sending for the children to, to, to proceed. Then another thing could be admission fast tracking. Okay, the admission fast tracking uh, for those that want to move from secondary school to university as the case may be. So you are bringing these schools to come and interview them and do all of those things and all of that. Okay, so what would be the out, I'm giving a case study, someone, uh, sorry, it's scenario, another person can use a different scenario. Now, what would be the outcomes? If by the end of this graduation, the schools that came for recruiting new students are there, that's an outcome. The people that came for talent hunt, that's an out, uh, sorry, that's an output rather. The people, the, the people that came for admission, they are their output. People that came for recruitment, they are their output. Um, uh, sending for the students, parents being their children, being their others being their output, right? Now, what are the expected outcome? The expected outcome is that by the time this talent hunters, now at the end of the day, they got the selected students, and then these students are now doing well in their respective area, bringing feedback, good report to the school. That now is an outcome. Did you get that? The recruited student or the, 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 the haunted talent student, let me use it that way, eh, that is now benefiting, is now having, there is a positive impact of the outcome, on, uh, sorry, of the output on him or her. That is now an outcome. Does, does this make any sense? The student must be engaged productively after the same for before we could ask, we start talking about outcome. The student must be admitted before we start talking about, I will still get feedback from the student to whether they are really being taken care of there. Uh, what the recruiter said they will do, is it what they are doing? Those things will not be outcomes. But the output still remains that yes, there was a recruiter. Yes, there was a recruitment took place, talent on took place, um, networking took place, and all of that. Okay. So the person that gave instance of um, a mini project, school graduation, I guess you got that. And if you notice, if you notice, like I said earlier, most project managers, if not all of us, we pay attention to output rather than outcome. We pay attention to output rather than outcome. Virtually every business that I know, they pay attention to output rather than outcome. It's only few that have attention paid on outcomes. And it's only those few that have attention on outcomes that have sustainability in place. Okay, it's only those few that have sustainability in place. Now, if you check your business critically, like the project topic you've decided to choose, look at that project and then ask your Self a simple question. In this company that we are, are we giving outputs or are we giving outcome? The outcome you'll be looking at, you'll be measuring outcome on the number of times cost, customers you serve send the referrals, the reviews your customers have on your product, uh, the number of uh, visits your customers get to have in your company, um, uh, the advancement that that product is having, the impact of that product on the people using it. Those are the outcomes. But creating the product is an output. So you have to sit down and do this analysis very well. That will help. Remember I said sustainab sustainability is hinged on outcomes, the positivity of outcomes. Every business that dies, dies if only the outcomes that they deliver are negative. But if the outcomes are positive, people will always want to come back. Okay, you 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 did a borehole, right? And the essence of the borehole was to provide portable sanit sanitary portable water. Yeah? And then you did a borehole that the borehole is now producing creamy colored water. Is there an output? Yes, but is there an impact? Yes, no. Or is there an outcome? No. Or perhaps you went to Medugiri to dig borehole. And the essence of that borehole is to reduce the prevalence of cholera, uh, cholera, what do they call it again? Cholera in that community because of the bad water they've been taking. Now you came and you dug borehole, and the, the water 
that you produce from the bowl now is contaminated to now promote high rise of cholera. Was there an output? Yes, but the outcome, was there a positive outcome? No. I hope we're all getting it together. Now, when you review your business, it's very simple. Look at your business critically. Look at that project you want to, that project the topic you want to look at now. Look at the output, look at the outcomes. This outcome, is it sustainable? If we give, give this to customer, will customer come back? This problem I want to address now, will it, will it only stop at output or will it graduate to outcome? Did you, are you getting it gradually? Because you see, no matter the project you're doing, we must see the outcome, of, not only output. So one of the things we must achieve here is that we must have moved ourselves from levels of outcome to output. Uh, sorry, from levels of output to outcome. Now, another challenge with not having the right outcome is that when you don't have the right outcome, uh, you always end up in redo. You redo the work. You redo the work. Okay, you redo the work. So the best thing is to avoid redo. Make sure that the outcome is rock solid and to have great positive impact on the people the target audience that that project is meant for. Uh, are we together? Please, if we are together, can you please type uh, uh, one one in the chat room? If we are not together, you can tell me. Let me let me start going. Is there anybody here now that does not? You cannot differentiate between outcome and output. Is there anyone that cannot differentiate between outcome and output? Is there anyone that cannot differentiate between outcome and output, or you need clarification? Do you know that we have just done simple things that if you actually take these things back to your organization by Monday, you will see great change. By the time you sit down on meeting on Monday, and then you begin to ask, actually, oh, please, I learned something from my marriage project by my class. Can we please identify the output that our company provide? And then can we please identify the outcomes that we give? Some of us will be very shocked to note that our companies are just producing output. We are just producing. You don't produce, produce bottled water. What is the outcome? It's not a concern. Just produce ourselves. By the time you sit down and do this, and then your company's eye will be open. Yeah. So we've actually been doing business and we don't even know the impact of our business outside there. The day you understand the impact of your business, then you will intentionally work on improving that impact so that customers will keep flooding into your business. Okay, so when you go back to work on Monday, intentionally, as you people start, uh, uh, what do they call it now, staff meeting, just tell them that there is something you learned and you would like them to introduce it to the organization. Question is simple. Can we please differentiate between our company's output and company's outcome? And then you explain what output is to them and then explain what outcome is to them. And then they will sit down, you'll be shocked they will take it for one hour, two hours, three hours, and tell you, okay, can we adjourn this meeting so that we can work for today? When we we'll come back tomorrow, we'll continue. And that can be the beginning of a revival or uh, an awakening in your company so that you don't just uh, do, 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 uh, five years, 10 years, company is closed, and then you start asking what happened. When there is no outcome, there is possibility of closure. But when outcome is consistent and continual, nobody will close you, even the devil won't have the power to close you, all right? Are we together on the same page? Is there anyone here who cannot define or cannot uh, explain the difference between these two? As simple as they are, they make a whole lot of difference in your mission. Okay, now, if you think the, the, this thing I just said now, this thing we just explained can, be, can improve your business. If you think knowing the difference between outcome and output in your company, Will improve your business if you think it will improve your business please i need you to type five five in the chat room so let's uh, let's leave it at 50 50. okay if you think these things we just discussed now will if introduced to your business can bring a change. Please type five five in the chat room. Someone is asking, what's the difference between input and output? Input is simply what you need to create the output. So for instance, if you need to, the 200 kilometers road we just mentioned, 
the impute will be things like the gravel. Okay, let's say emphatically the money, the project plan, and the laborers that will be doing the work. Those are major inputs. If you want to break it down, we need the sand, we need the gravel, we need the caterpillars, we need the people, we need all of those things. Those things are the input, the things you need to achieve the output or to get the output. Those are input, just like computer, garbage in, garbage out. So input, the things you need to achieve the output. Okay, all right. So when we get to our work on Monday, show them that yes, you've actually started a journey that will bring a change to the organization. All right, do I have any question before we go on a short break and then we'll be back in a moment. I think um, these ones have already uh, we'll come back. We will look at, uh, we'll just summarize and go. So we'll just take, let's take 15 minutes, all right? Let's take 15 minutes. So um, just take food, stretch a little. Today will be very short, 2.30 we are done and then we go home. But please next week, we'll, we'll be sharing the topics uh, on or before Wednesday, we will share, we'll divide the groups and then we'll start giving you your topics. So you read your topic, develop your case study, you present your case study in the class. All right, thank you. So let's take, let's take, uh, <laughs> Mr. Keller, we we'll sent the food to your email. Okay. <laughs> we we'll send the food to your email. Please download and eat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Someone is still trying to create some, um, um, make some contribution. Uh, Mr. Maruf, he said, for instance, training, input is the training, certificate is the output. So if you want to get certificates, then you need to put in training, that's from us. Then you, you need to put in coming to class. Coming to class is an input. Paying for the class is an input. Uh, writing the exam is an input um, and other things that follow. Then after that, you get the output, which is certificate, right? Okay, quickly, let's go on break. The class still remains open. We are not logging out. So we only stop the recording. So by 1.30 on the dot, we resume. 1.30 on the dot, we resume. All right, thank you and please do enjoy your do enjoy your 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 break. <laughs> <laughs> 